Hello, my name is Nikki, and today we are doing a show called Meet the Candidates, brought to you by Mr. Paul Herring. Sit back and enjoy as I ask the city council members valid questions as if to why we should vote for them in November's election. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Vicki Van Buren. How are you today, Ms. Van Buren? Hey, I'm feeling great, Nikki. How are you doing? I am great. First, let's start off. Um, tell the members a little bit about yourself. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you the short version because there's a long version too. Okay. But basically, I'm a resident of the city of Flint. Ben, this is where I was born. I graduated from here and I raised my family here. I'm 67 years old, so I've got some history here. And 25 years I was employed with the city of Flint, working with neighborhood organizations, mm -hmm. uh, putting on special events, uh, just getting involved with this community and uh, working on concerns that they had. Uh, after I left uh, City Hall, I ended up doing about 10 years at the International Academy, running an after-school program okay. for the little ones and meeting parents. and. So uh, that's should the short version, but I've always been involved one way or another in this community, and, and I love where I'm at, and I plan on staying here. Okay, let them know what ward you're running for. I am running for the 8th Ward, which is basically the southwest part of Flint. You're going from Hemphill, going north up to uh, Cord and Corona, and Ballinger on the west, and like Fenton. Uh, on the east as it curves around toward uh, Mill Road. Okay, first question. Why do you think you are qualified to run for a city council seat? I think the background, the experience that I have, especially what I gain by working with the neighborhood organizations, is I know what we can do mm -hmm. and I want to continue to be able to bring those resources to the table. I want to be able to represent the citizens of this area and do the best that I can to make sure we're going to keep it as the city we want to call home. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to give up in the city. I don't want to live this, leave the city like many other people don't. Right. You know, we've been here too long, and we're proud of what we've done, and I want to keep that going forward. Exactly, exactly. Okay, what is the biggest problem facing Flint? I think some of it may be the apathy, uh, some of the lack of resources and support that we get. Uh, I think City Hall could be more engaged in their community in mm -hmm. making these resources available. I know when I was involved with neighborhood groups, the people are the one that made these successes happen in right. our neighborhoods. But they also need support from the city. They can't do it by themselves. So if it's garbage collection, if it's public safety, uh, support from our law enforcement, if it's being able to communicate with different departments and leaderships that we have at City Hall. We need to keep that going and keep it strong mm -hmm. and we need it to be a two-way street so we can work together on accomplishing things in the city. Right, speaking of the law enforcement, what tools are Flint, what tools are Flint police lacking? Personnel. To prevent crime in our area. Personnel. Personnel? Okay. Personnel. Personnel. You know, we can keep on saying that. I know we can't have officers on every street corner, and that's not going to eliminate the crime. But we need to, uh, like, make sure, again, that we have the tools also ourselves in our neighborhoods. We need to know what's going on. I don't like it where I can't find out something that happened on Fenton Road in Atherton, and this was just yesterday. All of a sudden, I see the fire engine, police cars coming out there, and it's like, I saw them pick somebody up. Okay, did somebody get sick? Was somebody assaulted? Right. You know, but we need a way to communi communicate the information within our community and our neighborhoods and our ward. Because how do we know what we can concentrate on? How do we know what we can work on if we don't have that information? Right. I mean, if there's a bunch of uh, break-ins, you know, going on, okay. How is it happening? You know, is it vacant structures? Is it, are they coming through the back door? Is it young people? Is it people traveling in our neighborhoods from outside neighborhoods? Mm -hmm. You know, all that information is helpful. Now Halloween is coming up. Right. What can we do to help the safety for our kids? You know, at times it used to be we encourage groups to put on little community parties so we have a safe event for the kids. Right. We ask people to put street lights on or their home lights to uh, everyone can look out the windows and see what's going on next doors or across the street. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so I think it's getting 
the information with each other, sharing it and working together on it, whatever the problem may be. But again, the police needs our support as much as we need their support. Exactly. What are some Flint jewels? People, mm -hmm. our citizens, our, our neighborhoods, our neighborhood organizations. That you cannot have anything happen in the city of Flint unless we are proud of where we live at and what we have. I have met so many people that just does different type of getting involved with their neighbors that we don't even know about and cutting the grass next door for somebody else, picking up garbage off the street or off their yard, uh, making sure that if somebody needs help that they're going to have the help. Putting in these community gardens, that's a lot of work. I mean, if I was able to, I would love to have community gardens. I would love to be able and to purchase even some of the tomatoes, you know, because I know those would be the best tomatoes that we have. Especially those green tomatoes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a tomato fanatic, you right. know. But still, it's because of the efforts that they do. And we need to realize what what is going on and maybe how to show other groups or other neighborhoods, hey, this is what they're doing. Maybe we can do it together or we can learn from each other. Even the upkeep of our parks. You know, we have beautiful parks in our area if we can maintain them. And I've seen some good work out there that citizens are doing. So our jewels is keeping what we already have in Flint and improving on them. Yeah. I mean, downtown is improving. The cultural center is improving. Our schools, we had so many outstanding programs in our educational system that people from outside of Michigan uh, throughout different states would come and visit us to look at what we had. Mm -hmm. And I hate giving up on that. I want Flint to still be on top. If it's back to the bricks, whatever, you know, let's bring the attention to Flint the positive way. Exactly. And bringing that that provides jobs and all sorts of things like that, especially back to the bricks. And pride. And pride. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, Imagine Flint, did you participate in that? Okay, Imagine Flint, the master plan that we have that will need to be hopefully adopted uh, by the middle of October. Yes, I have participated in some of the meetings and the workshops. Uh, there's a number of them going on right now. If residents could go to any of them just to see some of the ideas that are coming, coming up that have been uh, put in by other citizens of this community. Uh, it would be great if when we can reach that image that they are promoting, right. but it's going to take work, it's not going to happen overnight, it's going to take money, but if we're all on the same track and working toward the same goal, changes can happen. Okay, I have a couple more questions for you. Should there be required training for city council members on their powers and responsibilities? I know speaking for myself, I will look forward to it. I want to know how I can be the best that I can be. Mm -hmm. And I feel that if there's training already available, and this is put on by the Michigan Municipal League mm -hmm. of Cities, they're the best. You know, so I will know how I can be effective, efficient, how we can work together as a team, you know, instead of all of us struggling and trying to start at different levels. Right. Hey, let's, let's know that we've been trained, we're professionals at it, and do the job. Sounds great, sounds great. Well, before we end our session, I want you to look at the camera and let the viewers know a little bit about yourself, why they should vote for you for the November election. I guess um, I didn't realize we were coming to the end, but uh, <laughs> I guess we did. No, what I would really want people to know is that I am serious and I'm committed and dedicated to doing the best job I can as a city council person. This has been my home for 60 some years and I want to still be here and call it home and be proud. I know I am proud of our community, our, our people. I know a lot of things could not have happened if it wasn't with us working together. So as your council person, I would be the voice for our community, for our ward at City Hall. I want us to have a two-way street of communicating with each other. I want to represent the ward and make sure that City Hall knows what our concerns are. All right. Thank you, Ms. Van Buren, and we'll be back.